Welcome to Worship at Wycliffe Presbyterian Church. We're glad you've joined us this day for worship as we consider dreams and visions in the Bible. Last Sunday, we celebrated Rally Day and kicked off our Sunday school year. We even had a foam party outside for all ages who wanted to jump into that light, fluffy, snow-looking substance called soap foam. It was so much fun. Of course, along with Rally Day, Adult Sunday School and Children's Sunday School has begun at Wycliffe, and there's a Sunday School class that meets both online and in person for adults. If you'd like an invitation to join, please email the church office at wycliffepresbyterian at gmail.com. This coming week, uh, starting actually on Sunday morning, September 17th, and going through Monday, September 18th, Wycliffe will hold an electronic election for the Office of Elder. The new class of elders began serving a three-year term in January of 2024 and will conclude their term in January of 2026. Please check your email for voting instructions and vote before the polls close. Don't forget that next Sunday, September 24th is an important date in the life of Wycliffe Presbyterian Church. In addition to morning worship, in the afternoon we will hold a service of installation for our new associate pastor, the Reverend Lindsay McCall Gilliam. That service begins at 4 p.m., and we hope to see many of you there supporting the ministry and mission of Wycliffe Presbyterian Church. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for all the dreamers in Scripture, young and old men and women, for those who dream of protecting families, for those who dream of children, for those who dream at all. By your Holy Spirit, enliven our dreams and help them become visions that we turn into reality. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God, we gather to praise you, and in this we are not alone. Every atom proclaims your glory from the smallest creature to the highest mountain. The valley sings for joy, the hills skip the lambs. And though we seldom notice, all of creation daily performs a symphony for your delight. We are also the work of your hand, so all with nature we sing. A reading from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25, and then Matthew 2, 13 through 15. Listen to and for God's word to you. The birth of Jesus took place like this. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. Before they enjoyed their wedding night, Joseph discovered she was pregnant. It was by the Holy Spirit, but he didn't know that. Joseph, chagrined by noble, determined to take care of things quietly so Mary would not be disgraced. While he was trying to figure a way out, he had a dream. God's angel spoke in the dream. Joseph, son of David, don't hesitate to get married 
Mary's pregnancy is spirit conceived. God's Holy Spirit has made her pregnant. She will bring a son to birth. And when she does, you, Joseph, will name him Jesus. God saves because he will save his people from their sins. This would bring the prophet's embryonic revelation to full term. Watch for this. A virgin will get pregnant and bear a son. They will name him Emmanuel. Hebrew for God is with us. Then Joseph woke up. He did exactly what God's angel commanded in the dream. He married Mary. But he did not consummate the marriage until she had the baby. He named the baby Jesus. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In my family, we are different types of dreamers. Now my dad, Dom, and I are the kinds of dreamers that have wild dreams, like octopus with ten eyes and outer space kind of stuff. Dom also seems to have dreams about being superhero or a ninja turtle. We are the ones in our family that wake up from their dreams and have to tell someone about it because they are just so wild. Are any of you wild dreamers? Now, my sister, she is the type who seemed to have a dream, or at least she never seems to have dreams that she remembers. She only remembers the one reoccurring dream where she wakes up and there are snakes under her bed. Are any of you this type of dreamer? Someone who doesn't really remember their dreams? Well, no matter what, research says that everyone dreams. EEGs and brain imaging techniques have proved that there is brain activity during REM sleep. And that indicates that there are occurrences of dreams happening. Some of us may remember them more than others, but we all dream. And one might surmise that even our wildest dreams have a message for us. And they might be from our subconscious are also from God. Now, there has been a lot of great work on this topic, of course, and I won't go fully into that today. And, of course, Edgar Casey, a well-known local sleeping prophet, certainly believed dreams had important messages for us. And that seems to make sense to me. Last week, I had a dream that I was racing from one place to another, and in my dream, I was racing from going to a presbytery meeting for which I enjoy being with other members in ministry. And then to another room where I was in a, uh, with my family, my Muir family, having a reunion. And then I wanted to be a part of another room with my loved one. And in this dream, it was Drew Carey. Now, that's kind of odd, isn't it? But yes, this is what happened in my dream where I was racing around and I couldn't get from place to place and I was just running around crazily. Well, obviously, you can tell that this is a silly dream, certainly, but it had a message for me that I probably needed to slow down and try not to do so much. I find it curious that the word we use for dreams that we have at night is also the word we use to describe our hopes and visions for the future. So then it seems to me that being attuned to how God speaks to us, whether that's actually in a sleepy dream or otherwise, but being intentional to listening to what God is saying to us is how we align ourselves with God's will for the future. 
Over the next few weeks, we will continue to dream together. Through September and October, we will continue our sermon series on dreams and visions that are found within the Bible. We then plan to pair that with particular dreams and visions and goals that we have for Wycliffe for you all that you all discerned at the last session retreat. And today we will focus on creating a plan to enhance our family friendly environment. You know, it's an exciting time to be a member at Wycliffe. We are in a unique time in our history when we have the ability to dream. You have new leadership in place now and resources to support new ideas. It's also critical right now that we must dream. Actually, all churches desperately need to be dreaming in order to continue to provide quality ministry for generations to come. However, we would be foolish to think we could do this on our own. And in order to dream faithfully, we must fir first discern God's will and seek God's guidance. Over the next few weeks, we will do just that. Listen for God's word to us as individuals and as a church. So I encourage you to open your hearts, open your minds in order to be God's vessels. It is through our dreaming that God has and will communicate God's desires for the future ministry of Jesus Christ. Today, as we think about the goal to create a plan to enhance our family-friendly environment, we must first dream about God's will for families. And in order to do so, I think we must start with a dream concerning a very important family. Let's start with the Holy Family. Mary and Joseph were engaged to be married, yet Joseph finds out Mary is pregnant. I can only imagine what went through his mind. And what we know about Joseph is that he is a righteous person. And whenever the Bible says that someone is righteous, it means they are in right relationship with God and living according to God's command. Or even more simply, he's one of the good guys. So though it was seemingly a scandal that Mary was pregnant, it says that Joseph planned not to disgrace her but to divorce her quietly. Now, Joseph is a dreamer. He has two particular dreams where God communicates through an angel. In the first dream, an angel assures Joseph and tells him not to hesitate to get married to Mary, for she is pregnant with God's son. In the second dream, he is called to protect his family and bring them to Egypt to hide them from Herod. Joseph is called to protect Mary and to protect the child. In the second dream, God calls Joseph again to the important task of protecting the family, particularly from King Herod. These stories are certainly written to show us the importance of Jesus. The birth narratives show us from the very moment Jesus was born that he was exceptional and an extraordinary child in God's eyes. He was someone worth protecting. Jesus, starting from childhood, obviously plays a vital role in God's ultimate plan for the redemption of the world. Joseph is given a message from God that Jesus was a child worth protecting. And aren't all children worth protecting? When Jesus grows up into adulthood, we see that he too deeply values children. In Matthew 19, 14, he says, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. God valued Jesus and protected him. Jesus, in return, values the children and protects them. And if we are now grown children, are we not called to value and protect our children and families too? I wonder 
what type of dreams we might have that would help value and protect children and families. Maybe we have dreams of protecting refugee families, like Jesus' family, from harm. Maybe we have dreams to protect our young people from anxiety and suicide and depression that seems to be running rampant. Maybe we have dreams of providing childcare or education for all. Or maybe it's making sure that the next generation generation has healthier food options. Many of you wrote down on your sticky notes from last week that you dreamed about world peace. I wonder what dreams do you have for families so that they may experience more peace? My guess is that God has put something on your heart. And this would be a good time to take out that sticky note and write down a dream that you may have for families or email them to us. And maybe you want to say something that also Wycliffe could do to support those dreams. How can we protect children and families? What is God's dream for that? However God is speaking to you, that's what we want to hear. Stories about Joseph are hard to find. Now in the early Christian traditions and the apocryphal writings that are non-canonical, meaning these were stories that aren't in our Bible and we do not see them as authority, in these writings you will find more stories about Joseph. In the canonical stories, we only have a few that tell us about him. We know from scripture that he was there for Jesus' birth. We also know that he was with Mary when they unknowingly left him when they were leaving for the Passover festival in Jerusalem when he was 12 years old. And there he was, Jesus, in the temple, engaging in conversation with religious leaders. These are the only two places we find stories in the Bible about the righteous earthly father of Jesus. In those non-canonical books, we have a few more stories. In the book of James, for example, it explores the early life of Mary and goes in more depth of Joseph's selection as Mary's husband and their marriage together. In the infancy gospel of Thomas, Jesus is depicted as a child and it includes interactions with Jesus. It even depicts Jesus as a young child displaying extraordinary knowledge and power. In the gospel of uh, pseudo-Matthew, it goes into further detail of Joseph's point of view of the infancy narrative that includes the birth, his dreams, his protection of Mary, and her journey to Egypt to escape King Herod. Again, these are not our holy scriptures, but these are stories that are out there about Joseph. And what I find most intriguing about them is that Joseph is portrayed as an older man, possibly a widower. And at the time of the betrothal of Mary, it is likely that he was much older. For this reason, it was likely why we do not see Joseph later in Jesus' life. Most notably, not at the foot of the cross with Mary. These texts suggest that Joseph had children from a previous marriage and was chosen by God to be the guardian and protector of Mary and Jesus due to his righteousness and maturity. There are two things here that I think are important for us to just ponder the concept from these stories. First, that even Jesus' family, who we might imagine to be perfect, had its unique complexities. And every family does. We all have our own stories. We all have moments that we love to celebrate and blast over social media. Yet we also have things that we don't always want to share. Families do. They come in all shapes and sizes, as well as different experiences. Knowing that's true, I think we are called to emulate God's authentic love for all people and all families 
no matter the race, the sexual relationship, the experience, or baggage they may even come with. Unfortunately, many families will never enter the doors of the church because there is this fear that they will be criticized, judged, or condemned for maybe the way they act or choose to live. Dominique and I have experienced firsthand in a church where there was a moment where there were folks who did not approve our, of our interracial relationship. And if my sense of call wasn't as strong as it was, we probably would have left not only that particular church, but maybe even the church. The unfortunate narrative among younger people is that the church is too judgmental. So as the people of the church, we have to work hard against that. We have to go over and beyond to show families that that is not true, that we are loving and we do care. It's particularly important if we feel the church is intended to be God's witness in the world. For if families have bad experiences with people in the church, it can not only be the turnoff to attend a church, but it can become a deeper question of faith. Why even be a Christian? We must show families that they ha- can be their authentic selves in the church. Sometimes our ways of being might even butt heads. But we have, if we have built those relationships of trust, those conversations can be had in love for one another. It is important that people experiences, experience God's genuine love for them through our Wycliffe welcome and hospitality. And as a new young family in this church, you have done that well. It is my hope that we will continue to keep our arms open and embrace all families, even with all their complexities. The second part of this message that I get from Joseph's character is the importance of the older and wiser person plays in the life of a family. And again, we don't know for sure if Joseph really was older, but we are playing with that idea. I think we are called to be um, non-biological parents to the generations below us. Many of you are older and wiser and have a lot to offer young families as you love them and care for them. You are part of the village that it takes to raise a child. I think there is a message here that reminds us today that we are called to take the responsibility to raise families well. Now, I wouldn't run and go to another parent and tell them they are doing something wrong, for example, or anything crazy like that. However, as a church, we need to be reminded of the baptismal commitment we make when we say that we will raise a child in the faith by nurturing and caring for them. Yes, young families are certainly our future, but they are also the church today. They inspire us and we inspire them. The church is multi-generational and it is a privilege and joy to know each other and share in faith together. Friends, we are called to dream. We are called to align ourselves with God's will and be vessels for God's vision. I believe we, like Joseph, are called to protect children and families. But how are we to do so? Only God knows. So we must listen for God to inspire us with wisdom, direction, and the willingness to be passionate enough to do something about it. In all that we do, may we give God glory. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, giver of all of our dreams, inspirer of all of our visions, be with us this day as we dream about families. Help us to fulfill the dream that you gave to Joseph to protect and uplift families. 
to be surrogate parents and adopted parents to the families in our midst, both young and old. Give us energy and enthusiasm to care for all of your children. On this day, we pray for your children this world round, those who have suffered great cataclysm in Morocco and Libya, those who hunger down the street from us, and those who worship in our midst. All of them are your precious and dear children. So give us the ability not only to dream, but the vision and the tenacity to both make this world a better place for your children and to care as you care through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for all those we know who are sick and who are hurting, for those who suffer anxiety and distress and despair and depression. Fill us again with your hope. Fill us with your joy. And remind us of all your promises. And now, most gracious God, teach us to pray once again as you taught your disciples by your Son, Jesus Christ, as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, God put dreams and visions in the hearts and minds of his people in the earliest moments of creation, and even until now. May God fill you with dreams and visions for the future. For as God said through the prophet Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you, plans for future and hope. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance towards you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>